Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and we are going to start off from where we left off last, which is uh, continuing on with this awesome 2048 game. I uh, hope you guys have had a great week and are uh, ready to get back into it. Um, I'm going to have to apologize for something really quick, uh, and that is uh, I've got my 3D printer printing stuff in the background, so I don't know if you can hear that, and um, hopefully it's not too annoying. But uh, we'll work around it. Uh, I just I have like this long six hour print going and uh, I, I don't want to pause it and, and risk messing it up. So I'm just going to let it continue to run and, you know, we'll have some background noise. <laughs> um, so where we left off last was we uh, of course, we have a fully functional 2048 game and uh, we now also have sound. So we have a sound for when the tiles move, and we have a sound for when the tiles merge. All right. So now um, we have a game, but we need a way for us to save our uh, game score, right? So let's say right now, okay, so our score is 164. So what if our next move uh, brings us to a game over, and uh, we want to store that score, so that we can keep track of what our best scores are so that we can kind of you know compete with ourselves because obviously this is a one player game and uh the only way that you're going to be able to compete with anybody is by having something to gauge against we have no score saving at this moment so what we're going to do in this tutorial which is also going to make it kind of short because it's a very very simple addition uh, which is great because, like I said, you know, before in the last video, you guys have been like, hey, you know, can you make the videos a little shorter? And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm going to try and break these up into smaller components and not do so many things every week. So just a little bit here and there as we move on. So the best way to do this, and in my opinion anyway, is uh, first let's, let's have a look at our... Uh, user um, interface and uh, right now as we can see we have um, we have score right here and all I did was zoom in and another way to do that is uh, let me just get back to and I'm gonna do it the long way so I can show you guys that there is an easier way to do this and if you already know it don't tell everybody um, so Let's say that we're here and we're looking at our at our uh, grid for the uh, tiles and stuff. So, if we want to look at our user interface, all we really have to do is over here on the left hand side, we can click on double click on HUD canvas, and what it'll do is it'll zoom in on that, and then we can kind of just make it a little bigger. Um, we can also then zoom back into our grid if we want by double clicking on that. So by just double clicking on the items in the hierarchy, they are zoomed into. Okay, we can zoom into the main camera, the background, the grid, HUD canvas, and that's really it. So let's make that bigger so that we can mess around with it. And so as you can tell, we've got our score. And that's where uh, every time we make a move and we merge pieces, that's when this gets incremented. So. What I'll do here is uh, I'll click on score and uh, this actually expanded uh, the HUD canvas and you see we've got two items in here. We've got HUD score text and we've got text. Text is just a static kind of text right here that we did and then the HUD score text is the one that we actually named HUD score text uh, and that's the dynamic text that um, is actually set in our class so that we can update the score. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this text here. So I'm going to press command D and uh, you, it, it may not look like anything has happened but if you look in your um, hierarchy you'll see that you now have a text one object. Okay? And that's fine. Uh, we're going to go up here to our transform tool and then we're just going to pull that up a little bit. Alright. So this looks kind of dumb because it's the same size. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this best 
And I'm going to change the size. Let's go with like 40. It's like half the size. And we can bring it down a little bit. Put it right here. All right, so we've got best. And then what I'll do is uh, I'll duplicate this again by pressing Command D. And you'll see now we have a text 2 in the hierarchy. Well, let's... We can rename this. If we right click and click on rename. So let's name this something uh, like uh, best score text. Okay. So with the transform tool, uh, tool still selected, we can actually just move this over. All right. So this thing just says best right now, which is completely inaccurate. Uh, we're gonna go with the same kind of format we had before, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros. We're just going to put that in there in the text field of that property. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So, our user interface portion of the uh, tutorial is basically done. Almost. There's one more thing we got to do, and uh, we can't forget it. Otherwise, we're going to waste a whole lot of time. So, before we get to that, let's go ahead and go to our scripts folder and open up the game script. Okay, so double click on that and of course mine opened on the other monitor so I'm just gonna drag this over all right so this is what our uh, game script looks like right now so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll all the way up to the top and go to the variables and we're gonna go ahead and create another variable of text type and we're gonna call this best score text. Alright, so now before we do anything else, let's save that and let's go back to Unity to the editor and let's go to the grid game object in our hierarchy because that's where we have our game class connected to. And if we click on that, you'll see that we now have a property in the game component that's uh, entitled best score text, which is the variable that we just created. So, what we'll do is, under the HUD canvas in the hierarchy, you can see that we have our best score text right here, the game object. We're just going to click on that and drag it over to best score text. All right. So now that there's a relationship between the two, we can actually access that in the code and tell it to update the text property of that uh, text game object. So let's go ahead and go back to the game class. And let's do something here. All right, so in the start method, when the game first starts, what you'll want to do, because, you know, your game uh, needs to load that best score from somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, built-in class that Unity has called player prefs to save integer values to... A, a file that Unity creates within our game that we can then later access to get information out of. So, and the way that looks is we're going to access, actually access it right now. Um, we're going to say um, best score text dot text. All right. So we're setting the text property of our best score text. I'm going to set that equal to player prefs dot get int because we're going to store it as an integer. And then what it wants is a key, all right? And we have to encapsulate that inside of double quotes because it's a string. So with that, we're just going to use best score. So, and the reason that I'm using that is because later on, when we, oops, there's one more thing. And we have to tell it that uh, we have to convert it to a string because we're storing it as an integer. Later on, when we actually set our value we're going to use this same key to set it so when what this data looks like when it is stored is it's going to store a, a key right um, so called best score and in that key is going to be a value that is going to be either one two three whatever our score is and then in order to get at that value we have to know what that key is so then we, we use the same key for setting and getting, basically, right? I hope that's not confusing. It shouldn't be. So at the very start of the game, what it's going to do here, it's going to say, hey, um, get 
what's in the best score key, the value, turn it into a string, and set it as the text property of the best score text game object. Which, what that will do is it'll actually show what the best score is in, in that game object that we just created. If there is nothing set, which is going to be the case when we first play the game, it's just going to display a zero because that's what it's getting back, a null value. So we're getting a zero because nothing is stored there currently. So that's our start. So now let's think about a se uh, let's think about this for a second. When do we want to update that best score? Right? Do we want to update the best score every time the score is higher than the previous best score? Or do we only want to update that best score once when the game is over? I thought about this for a little while actually, and I think that for aesthetic reasons and psychological ones maybe, <laughs> you're gonna to wanna to do that update at the very end. So what'll happen is is we play the game, right? The whole time that we play the game we can see our best score. Like let's say that our best score was twenty, right? And as we play the game and we approach our best score, we get hyped up. We're like, oh man, we're about to beat our score, right? So then after we reach that, right, do we want to automatically update? Like, let's say we get to 21, and then do we want to automatically update the best score to be 21? Because then it feels like you're constantly in a race with yourself. You're like, oh man, all right, so the best score is now 21, now I gotta beat 21, then the best score is 22, now I gotta beat 22. You want to see how far you've come from your previous best score. So let's say the last score, I been again, the last best score was 20, and you want to go to, and, and you pass that, and you're like at 22, and then you're at 30, and then you're 40, and then you're like, oh wow, look, I, I had 20, and now I'm at 40, this is awesome, right? So the other the other thing you want to think about is we want to, we want to do this when the game is over, right? So we, we update the saved state of the score when the game is over, but we don't update that visually, right? So right when the game is over, you get to see what your current score is, and you get to see what your best score is. So you don't want to update that best score to the current score right when the game ends, because then the player isn't going to be able to see the comparison between the two, okay? So what you want to do is you want to update that best score once they click the play again button or if they restart the game. That's the only time that you want to show the player that their best score value has changed. Because otherwise, like I said, they're not going to have anything to compare it to and it's like, I think it might be a psychological thing, an aesthetic thing, whatever. But you got to be able to, you know, differentiate between your previous score and the current score. Right? That makes sense, I think. Okay. So enough theory. Let's get to that part. Alright, so I'm gonna jump to this part right here where we have our update score. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add two new methods and one is going to be update best score and the other is going to be update or no save best score because we want to be able to save, we want to be able to update and we want it to be clean and we don't want to write a whole mess of code inside of other methods so we're just going to be able to call these right okay so update best score should be very simple and all we need to do here is we just do um, best score text dot text equals uh, player prefs we're going to pull from player prefs and we're going to say get int and then we're just going to do uh, the key, which is best score. All right. Oops. And again, we forgot to string. All right. So now that that's all we need for updating the best score. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to actually uh, create the code to save the score. And that's pretty simple as well. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable real quick, and we're going to call this an int. I'm going to say uh, old best score equals uh, player prefs, and we're going to do get int. Um, yep, get int and best score. So that will actually 
set this uh, old best score variable up with the value that is stored in the best score uh, key. So then, uh, what we need to do, we need to compare our current score. So if our current score is greater than our old best score, right? Because we only want to update the best score if we actually have a better score to update it with. Uh, we don't want to go backwards. We don't want to be like, hey, last time I had 20, that was my best score. This time I only got five. Now that's my best score. Nope. Uh, if your all-time high is 20, then your all-time high should remain 20 unless you had 21 or 22 or any number past that. So if our current score is greater than our old best score, we are going to just update. We're gonna say, hey, um, so player prefs dot set int, all right? So that's how we do that. And then we use that same key, best score. And we also have to pass in the value. So we just add score as the value, all right? So now where to call these? Well, we have our check game over method but uh, I don't, I don't want to add it in there because I feel like it'll just get buried. So what I want to do is I want to find out where we're calling check game over. And that is right here in our update method. So in our update method, we have this if not check game over, check user input. That means that, you know, of course, that we're checking user input if the game isn't over. Otherwise, when the game is over, we are setting the canvas the game over canvas to true. Well, we can also in here, while the game is over, we can say, hey, um, let's save the player prefs. So we do um, save best score. So not not save player prefs. <laughs> save best score. And uh, we also want to update. All right, so this is something that I found The reason that I'm doing this. This is something that I actually found out while I was working on uh, doing this whole uh, tutorial for you guys. Because what happened was is the best score was saved. And um, I was shown my current score, just like it always has been. And when I clicked on play again, it showed me my updated uh, best score. Well, my updated best score was higher than what I saw my current score was. And and the reason for that is, is that the current score right now, the way that we're updating it, is it gets updated when tiles are merged, okay? When, when the player presses a button. But when the game is over, there is no more button pressing, and that last score update isn't being updated on the HUD. It's, it's actually being incremented in the score variable, but it's not being updated at, at, in the HUD so that we, we can't actually see it. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you update that score one last time when we get a ba uh, game over. So uh, let's see here. So we're saving the best score that gets saved to player prefs and we're updating our score. So we're still not saying, hey, the user, here's your new best score. Check it out. No, he can't see it yet. But when we do want to show it is we want to show it in our method that uh, we use when we click play again. So that method, of course, is called play again. So I think we have that all the way at the bottom. Or not. Um, close to all the way at the bottom. Here it is. Play again. Alright. So when we do play again, we're already updating our score here. And let's also update best score. All right, which reminds me now, we can actually go all the way to the top and in our start method, instead of using this line, we can also just use update best score. All right, so hopefully, hopefully we did everything right and it all should be working. So let's go ahead and save. Let's jump over to the Unity Editor. We're gonna press play. So this will be the fun part because first, okay, so <laughs> here's the thing. Because I already did this before, um, my best score is already up here at 2364. Uh, and that was just a test score. My, my best score is way better than that. So anyway, <laughs> uh, instead of doing that, let's, let's 
let's stop this for a second and uh, let's go back into our game script and I'm going to just blank out my best score so I'm just gonna say uh, player prefs um, dot set int and I'm going to use best score as the key and then I'm going to give it a value of zero so I'm just basically resetting my player prefs um, so you'll notice actually let's put this above here alright so you'll notice that now it should say zero for my best score yep zero alright so now we can remove that so that it doesn't continuously do this because otherwise we're gonna scratch our heads and be like whoa it's not saving the best score why is it not saving the best score and then eventually we will find this line in the start menu that uh, is the culprit of it all and is like hey hey this is why you're not saving your best score alright so with that saved let's go back to the editor click all right, so now we can play around. So let's do that. And you would think that like getting a game over is, you know, a simple process, but you know, it's it's, it's harder than you think. Come on, we can do it. Yes, game over. All right. So you see how um, my score is 520, my best is still zero, and I have this play again a button you know that we worked on a long time ago. So I'm gonna click play again, and you'll notice that the best score should change to 520, and the score should of course change back to zero. All right, so that that works as expected. So now we need to test the ability of the best score to be updated only when it's greater than. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to keep a, a low score below 520 and, and uh, hopefully we can do that and see if it actually um, updates, which it shouldn't. So sometimes testing games can be a very frustrating experience. The best score is updated like it should be. Alright, I feel a game over coming up. Yep. Alright, so now, like I said, see, we can see our last best score, which is 520, and we can see our new score is 1,184, and we're like, yay, we beat our best score. Let's, let's play again and see if we can beat the new best score. And now we should see the new best score being 1184, which it is. Alright, so now let's try to do this game over thing again. And make sure that it doesn't update yes alright <laughs> okay so our score is 920 and we're like ah oh, man we didn't beat our best score Let's see if our best score sticks around yes it did alright so it did everything is good we have our best score our best score is working everything is good Feels like this is the shortest tutorial I've ever done. Although, I don't know. Maybe it's not. So anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, next week we're probably going to do uh, like an undo feature. Or a save game state feature. Or, I don't know. Whatever you guys want. Uh, if you have some ideas. Like, if you want to see some specific addition to this game. Let me know. Um, and, you know, we can work it out. Uh, otherwise, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Doesn't matter. I, I, I accept all. I love to hate and hate to love. It's all good. Um, thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications so that you can, you know, stay up to date. And, and get all these latest videos that I put out because uh, they're so super awesome. Um, so I'll see you guys uh, next week.